All right, so I'm gonna take off the wheel or the tire, I should say. So got my valve cap off. Uh, I'm gonna take the valve core out. Usually, I recommend people to deflate the valve core before they actually take the valve core out. And that's just for safety reasons. Reason for that is because uh, it's under pressure, and you and you take this out, it doesn't fling out. So I usually just go loosen up a little bit, and I have full access to the the valve itself. I can push it all the way in. Um, so that's the that's the safe way of doing it. Otherwise, you do the unsafe, the less safe way of doing it. It's just while well, I still pressurize, do this. But when you do this, put your, all your fingers all the way around the whole side of the uh, the valve, so that way the the core doesn't have a chance to the core doesn't have a chance to fly out into your eyeballs. So that's out. Everything's off. Soapy water. Um, actually. I actually used the new stuff. I actually bought some tire cleaner stuff, but uh, not tire cleaner. I mean tire uh, tire lube, tire lube for changing tires. So all these years, I always use soapy water, and I've never had problems with with it. But uh, but uh, apparently, soap soap is a little bit corrosive to uh, to uh, the rim. But you know, I've never owned a bike long enough. The longest bike I've ever owned was uh, my. Elite 110, which I had for 10 years, and that one was fine even after 10 years. And I used soapy water on that thing all the time. And I used, I went through a lot of tires on that bike, and it's, I never had any problems with it. But, anyways, I'm gonna take it off with this. I'm gonna wipe the rim clean. Then, um, then I'm gonna use the tire loop to, uh, to mount the new tire. So, let's, uh, move this up. I didn't get a chance to put the bike or the wheel out in the sun to, you know, warm it up, uh, which is okay. It's, it's not it's not cold i would i wouldn't say it's cold but it's not it's not warm it's just ambient temperature so this is what i'm using i'm using the motion pro bead breakers slash tire levers but i really don't use the tire levers on it i don't like this style of tire levers it doesn't they don't work very well uh this is i like the spoon type so this is this right here i like much much more it just works better a little bit more curve Narrow here, tapers down, so it's, you know, so it's less in the way. So, anyways, so this is how, how this works. You have two sides. So this is a small one. This is the the one that you bring with you when you you know when you when you ride. So this is meant for dirt bikes, but I use it for everything. Um, so these ones are aluminum, so they're lighter, smaller and lighter. Uh, the reason why I like use these these ones over my the steel ones, and I have the steel ones as well, is because uh, aluminum less likely to mar up your rims so let me take off the uh the sprocket because it's you know it's kind of high right here and it's making my wheel rock like so let me take that off just wiggle it there you go comes off there's the uh these are the wheel the cush the cush uh cush drives you know street bikes have cush drives dirt bikes don't and you want cush drive because cush drive is what protects your uh, the drive the drive train from from that shock from that shock of um, oops wrong direction from the shock of uh, um, of the drive when you're on the gas or when you or when you're off the gas. The key to this is making sure this the this lower fork right here goes all the way until the end here bottomed out in the inside the rim sometimes you can't get that the first time so you have to do it a few times to make, to give yourself some some uh room and once that happens oh that was easy so being a, i guess being a dual sport tire it's not as stiff as like a street tire is but also this is you know this bike is pretty new it's only uh you know this is brand new this is the first time i'm taking this wheel off so it's pretty new it's uh you know only has 2200 miles uh original tire original rim so everything actually came off surprisingly quick easily in that regards usually when the tires on there for longer uh longer time but also uh longer uh, uh more miles it will be harder to to uh to uh, uh 
unbeat the uh, unbeat the uh, the tire off the rim like I just did quite easily, surprisingly. So same thing with this one. Let's fit right here so the so tire doesn't move. And underneath I have a rubber pad, so that's why I'm I don't worry about my my uh, brake motor getting getting scratched up or anything like that. So I'll make myself a little bit of room right there. So I can squeeze this thing all the way in. Okay, it's all the way in, bottoms out. Let's see if I could do the same thing on this side. Uh, nope, I can't. It's all right, I made a little gap. So just go a little bit, you know, about four inches away. Do the same thing. And the key to doing this, especially if tires that are hard to come off, is you, you do this all the way around Usually after the first time, it'll pop. After the first time around, it'll pop off. The for the really stubborn, uh, stubborn ones, it will take two times around for it to pop off. And when you go around like that, what it, what happens is that when earlier you saw the uh, the bead kind of or the sidewall kind of move away from the from the rim. So when you go around like that, is that it moves the moves the tire away from the rim just a little bit, all the way around. Then when you go around uh, again, it, it moves it more. Then then it pops off. Because when it's all the way, you know, completely stuck on there, especially when the tire is older or been there for a while, it, it sticks. So that's why it's hard to come off. But once you once you break that sticking stickiness uh, and you give it a little bit of space, it comes off pretty easily. So that side off, both sides are off. So now I could uh, 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 pry this over. So I don't I don't I don't know what happened to my rim protectors. Normally I have rim protectors because I don't want I don't want to mar up the rims because when you, when you just do this bare with the bare spoons you'll mar up the rims here and I don't want to do that. I have some tire protectors but I don't know what happened to them. Uh, let me go try to see if I can make some makeshift uh, tire rim protectors. All right so I just cut off some uh, plastic water bottle jugs. I'm gonna see how well this works. I'm not sure how well this works but uh, this is what I got. I was thinking of using a, a instead of the water bottle jug, I was thinking of using the, um, so basically you shim it underneath and basically you're protecting the rim is what you're, you're doing. So, like so. Let's see, hold on a second. Let's uh, push this in here so that way I have some space. Like that. It's one side, then get the spoon on the other side. So I was gonna use some, um, Some milk jug uh, plastic instead. I think, that, I think that that will actually work better than uh, than the water bottle plastic because it's a, you know it's a different type of plastic. It's more it's more hardy. The milk jug plastic is uh, God, now I can't remember the acronym. It's HD is it HDPE whatever it is. But anyways, it's 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 a more hardy plastic. Uh, so I think it would hold up better to this type of use versus this this water bottle plastic. That, that, that. Basically, just go along, keep on going. Alright. So once you get once you get a certain amount of a certain amount of the uh, of the tire off, right? You don't need to hold it in anymore, so it shouldn't you know it shouldn't slip back in. So you you can actually take this out. Um, now we just basically go along along the edge and and uh, get the rest of it off. Let's see. Let's take this one out. I don't think I need that one there either. The cool thing about this is it's so thin, and so it didn't it didn't break through. So that's good. That means it uh, it held up. So that's a good sign. Uh, need a little bit more water here. Let's try it out. So I'd actually spit it in the Motion Pro ones because the Motion Pro, those blue ones, they're kind of thick, and they uh, they make it harder because you have less. Basically, you have less slack, right? So with this one is actually thicker or it's thinner, so you got more slack.
good there. Yeah, pull the rest of it out. Yeah, there you go. Like so, that's it. Now we need to do the underside or the under uh, bead. So that one's a, the one's a little bit harder because you have to reach underneath. Reach underneath. Yeah, so I always aim for my valve, valve stem. I do that first because the valve stem is in the way. So basically what you want to do is you want to get into the channel of the rim in, on the inside uh, to, so that way the, the tire will the tire bead will go into the bottom of the channel so it gives you the most slack uh, so I, I do at the valve stems because that way the valve stems not in my way because if I lift it up and let's say my valve stems over here that cha the tire is going to go in and it's going to hit the valve stem and now I have less slack so that's why I always uh, when I take it off I always uh, do that at the valve stem first to that way the valve stem's not in my way, basically. All right, so let's go to the other side now. This side's starting to dry up. Still slightly wet, but yeah, it's just soapy water. I like to use Dawn dish soap. I think a lot of dish soap that I use, I think Dawn seems to be the seems to be the best working one. It seems to be the least. Uh, but it seems to be the uh, the most slippery. So I'm pulling this side up right here, this bead up right here, and I want to make sure that I clear the rim underneath like so. Now you can see the uh, the spoon right there. All right, got that in there. It's basically that. Hold it over there. I'm gonna use my feet. Move this around. Another spot. Right down in, right there. Right there. I'm gonna slip my plastic right there. Another spot there. Alright, so I've got two spots. Move it along. I got it hooked in on the bottom one, like so, and this space right here between the rim and the uh, and the spoon. You just tip this right in, right in like so. Right in there. Like so, mm -hmm. in there. It's good. Usually, when you have this many uh, of the bead off off the rim. On the second side, you should be able to just kind of pull, pull at it, <sighs> or since I'm wearing dirty pants right now, I don't care about it. Oops, I could just do this. You can actually see, see how much is exposed. You can just actually let me, uh, move the camera up. You just basically, I just, so much just put my knee right here, and I flex it down. This one's that's not doing it very well. Maybe that I'm just tired. So anyways, I'm gonna grab it right here and right here and I'm just gonna spread them apart. All right, so, oops, my spoon just moved. I think this is drying up too. So don't, don't, uh, don't discount the lube. The lube is, is the secret, you know, that's the secret sauce to getting this off. Okay, I think I might have to do one more. So let's see, where's my plastic? My other one, I got three of them. There we go. So, so this side over here is being held by one uh, this way here by one spoon. Right there. So, so that's this one's being held, held and protected. So let's do this side over here. Okay, so the spoon doesn't move. Okay, doesn't move. Okay, spoon is on the other side. Feed my my uh, 
push it through. Uh, that. Okay. I think I have enough now to pull this thing all the way up. Let's see. Let's see that. that. There we go. Uh, let's see how thing up my rim is. Yeah, it looks okay. Oh, wait a minute, I see a little bit of a, a little bit of ding right here. God dang it. I think, I think the plastic just didn't held up. It might have chewed through the plastic, I think. Because this, this plastic is, it's not that sturdy. I should have used the milk, oh, here we go. Yeah, chewed right through it. I should have used the milk crate one. The milk crate one would, and right here to chew through it. The milk crate one would have been better. I mean, not the milk crate, I mean the milk jug. The milk jug plastic holds up better, I think. All right, so now I just need to wipe my rim clean. Wipe the rim clean. Actually, this is the same rag that I was using to clean my chain, so it's all greasy and oily. Which actually, it's actually WD-40. That's what I use to clean my chain. So it's, so it's, so it's greasy with WD-40. So I'm not too concerned about it. Some people actually use WD-40 as a lubricant to mount and dismount their, 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 uh, their tires. I think that's a bad idea because it doesn't really go away, right? The B40 doesn't go away, it stays in there. So you have this loop the whole time. So basically, potentially having your, your bead slip on the, uh, on, the, on the rim the whole time. I think that's a bad idea. So you can see the rubber the rubber along with the the edge of the the uh, uh, the edge of the tire, uh, where it's away from the uh, where where the, the rubber starts to, the tire starts to move away from the uh, the rim. That's usually typical. That's typical. That's normal. So I could do a more thorough job and actually like clean it, clean it. But this is good enough. I've never had, I never had problems doing it, doing it my way. So I'm gonna leave it like so. Go back. So the reason why I chose this side, the chain side, instead of the the uh, rotor side, the the uh, chain side is because the chain side, you know, that's where the chain is. That's where it gets all dirty and stuff. And we when, when you do something, and you know you have the lever mar up the rim a little bit, it's always dirty anyways. So you can't see it. So that's that's the reason why I do that. Um, all right, now I just need to get the new tire and put it on. <laughs> 